some questions. Firstly, how are you now? I'm good, thank you, Mike. Um, a little bit sad because um, my time here is almost over. Um, so I, I will definitely leave with uh, sadness. Um, a little bit excited about, about moving on and about um, you know, new, new challenges on the horizon, um, but a little bit sad. To be honest, I'm really curious about why you chose Vietnam to uh, especially create, mm -hmm. to live and work in. Uh, can you tell me about that? Sure. Um, I'm, I'm not too sure why I started thinking about Vietnam. I, I don't know what started it all. Um, but I remember when I was reading and learning about Vietnam, you know, reading books and researching on the internet. Um, everything I did, everything I read really interested me and, and it was just a, a question of it just seemed to get bigger and my, my desire to come here got bigger and I, and I couldn't find any reason not to, not to come here. Um, so, when, so when that process was happening it made it quite difficult for me to change my mind and, and choose somewhere else. Um, but with, with Huey that, that, that was quite an easy decision too. Um, where I'm from in England, I'm from a very small village, so there's about 500 people uh, that live there um, and it's surrounded by countryside and, and, and green fields. Um, so so that, that means that if I lived in somewhere like Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh City, I think it would be too big, too busy and uh, a little bit too crazy for me. So Hawaii was um, a good fit because it's, it's just about big enough uh, to feel like a you know, city but at the same time you can, you can be in the countryside and uh, get away from, from the busyness very easily. Uh, what did you think or you know about Vietnam before getting here? Uh, before, before I came here, um, probably what I learned in school. Um, so at school we, we studied a little bit um, about the history of Vietnam in the, in the last century. Um, so, so I knew that that was obviously a, quite a difficult period in the quite a bad time for Vietnam. Um, besides that, what, what I knew about Vietnam was mostly coming from, from you know, friends um, who, who visited here. Um, so I could ask one or two people a little bit um, about Vietnam. But it's, it's difficult to know for sure before you come somewhere completely new. You, you don't really know what it will be like. So um, there, there were a few surprises when I, when I got here. Till now, it's nearly three years in Vietnam and more than one year with FFAB. Uh, what's your impression about FFAB and uh, Hue? Um, my, my impression of Hue um, will, will be something that I always remember, and, and that is that it's, uh, it's a beautiful city, um, lots of water, lots of, you know, there's obviously the river, but besides the river, there are canals which kind of crisscross through the city. And it's nice and green as well. There's lots of uh, lots of trees, and if you go along the riverbanks, there's lots of uh, almost like jungle. So it's, it's a really pleasant place to live. Um, by and large, quite a quiet city, which would suit me. Um, but as, as for FFAV, um, I would say fun would describe uh, the organisation. I think there's. Um, I think a sense of fun is very important to this place and, and to the people who, who work here. But but I think obviously the you know the children who, who take part in that project, fun is the number one thing that I'll, I'll remember and that I, I might struggle to find in, in you know in, in later work environments. Um, it's it's a very happy organisation. People are extremely friendly, and, and you hear the word family used a lot to describe to kind of just describe the relationships that people have with each other. It is like a you know, really, a really big family, and, and if you have a problem, you, you can be sure that someone in the office or someone within the organisation can can help you. When moving here gradually, uh, you gain more and more experiences, mm -hmm. especially in your working fields. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any comments or advice for the department you are working with, especially in marketing, volunteer, and cooperating panelists? Okay. Um, with the, with the volunteer one, that's maybe something that's the closest to my heart because before I started working here, I was a volunteer myself, so I, I got to know a lot of people and um, working for the office, that was a, that was a, big, a big task of mine. And I, I would just say, um, 
to, to, to the volunteers coming in, continue to, 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 to enjoy it. Um, make sure when you, when you come here, when you come to the office, try and find something that you can do that you'll like doing. There's this little point in, in choosing something that, that feels more like a chore. Um, and it's really possible to, to, to learn new skills, get good experience, but also have fun at the same time. Um, and, and, and so I'm sure that the office, you know, after I'm gone, will, will carry on that. And uh, volunteers will know that they can, they can choose and, and maybe specialise a little bit, which is, which is something new. Um, so, so I'm sure that that will continue. Um, with, the, with the marketing side and the PR side, I think that um, I think that's definite, definitely in a better position now than it was a year ago. Um, you've seen the, the new website, um, which is hooked up to the, the different social media platforms. We now have five different five different ways in which we can uh, communicate what we do. So I mean, we, we, we've got YouTube, which is which is video, and we've got Flickr, which is about um, project pictures, which we're really strong on. Um, and also um, blogs as well, where you can read about personal stories. So that there are three good examples of, of how we can just continue to let people know, let the outside world know what we're doing here. Um, so I, I would say keep developing that. Don't stop um, looking for new ways to engage people um, because people are interested in what we do. You know, not just in Vietnam and not just in Norway. I think there are many, many people in Asia, in Europe, in the rest of the world who. who who can actually learn a lot from us, and I, and I think we, we, we really should be um, getting the message out there as much as we can because, because what we do is fantastic, and um, I, I think a lot of people could uh, benefit from seeing how we do things. Uh, and for the future, uh, and for the further uh, development uh, of the project, do you have any advice for FFAB? Further development of the project? Um, Big question, that isn't it, Mike? I would, I would, I would say, don't change um, the, the, the values and the and the and the attitude and the approach that, that people have in this in this project. So it, it's spot on. Um, I mean, if, if you look at this board here we, behind us, we have the 108 uh, club logos, and, and now we have 110 clubs in the project, and that that is going to only increase. And I think that is because um, what we do is, is very accessible. I think with a little bit of persuasion and a little bit of training and uh, just a little bit of awareness, people can really get to grips with what we do. Um, so, so I hope that that can continue, but I really hope that we never lose that, that sense of fun. Um, because that, that is what keeps the, the children coming back. That, that's what keeps them excited about football. It's, it's knowing that you know, when they turn up to training or a football tournament, or some large event like that, that they know they're going to see their, their friends, they're going to be able to relax outside, play a bit of sport, catch up with their friends, and, and they can be sure that their teachers and their football coaches are also you know, really enjoying the day. So um, that, that's, how I, that's how I like to see the project going. I'm, I'm sure it will. Uh, do you want to say something to your friends? Uh, yes. Um, you can say to the camera. To the camera. Yeah. Sure. Um, I'd just like to say to say thank you um, to, to all of the friends that I've made here. Um, it's been it's been a pleasure to get to know you, and uh, you've I guess you've all helped me adapt to living in Hawaii and the you know the the, the, the life in Hawaii and also the working environment in Vietnam. Um, I've got some f fantastic memories uh, because of you. Um, so I guess it's not like I guess like Ian and Barrett said in their video, videos, it's not it's not really goodbye, it's 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 hang goodbye, isn't it? Um, so I, I I'm sure I'm gonna be, be coming back. Um, I've got I've got a, a friend who will be a dad in, in about two weeks here, so I'd, I'd love to come back and, and see how he's getting on. Um, I think many people always come back to Hawaii. Um, I, I've I've known lots of people since I've been here, expats living here who've had a great time, moved on, but, but they always come back. So I'm sure that I'll be you know, popping in. Uh, can you guess who will be the tallest man in FFAB after your leaving? Uh, it's not fun, is it? Um, <laughs> can't be shown. Yeah. We've got Fong here, Chung here, Anders here. It, it must be one of the volunteers. I think uh, here, possibly, he's quite a, he's quite a tall guy. Um, yeah. Uh, will you come back here? Back here? 
to the office yeah. if I'm invited. Yeah.